Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Every person that has ever breathed on this planet knows that there is a God, that they have come short of what He wants them to be, and that there is an impending judgment against their sins. That's what Romans 1, 18 through 20 is saying. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm on a continuous series that I started just yesterday, and I'm teaching nearly verse by verse through the book of Romans. I tell you, this excites me. I don't know how you respond to this, but the book of Romans is one of the greatest, a matter of fact, I call it Paul's masterpiece on grace. He teaches and explains grace in a way that if a person follows what he says through the book of Romans, it would be impossible for you to embrace what he says and still stay a legalist, still stay a, stay a person who is just living by performance and living under condemnation. I promise you that this will set you free. So I just started this yesterday. I've got a lot of product. We'll be talking about that at the end of the program, but I've got a brand new book out that is a combination of my footnotes from my living commentary. That's a digital commentary that I have on the Bible. I have now written footnotes on over 25,000 verses in the Bible over the last 30-something years. And so it's got all of those uh, footnotes that are on the book of Romans, plus it's got teaching that I've done and it takes that and combines it. So some of it might be an overlap and a repeat, but you put them together and you just get a commentary, I believe, on the book of Romans that will open this up to you and make these truths come alive. So yesterday we just got started and I was in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, which is where I believe Paul begins to start making uh, some of the main points that he's going to say throughout this book of Romans. And in Romans 1, 16, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I spent quite a bit of time yesterday explaining that when he uses this term gospel, it was a rare word. Nobody used it because it means good news, but actually more than just good news, it's nearly too good to be true news. And there was nothing in the Jewish religion about all of the rules and the regulations and how many steps you could take on a Sabbath day and all of these rituals that they had. It was oppressive. And uh, later, Paul talks about it's a burden that we couldn't bear. Why would we try and impose this on anybody else? It was, it was bad news. The gospel, or let me not use that term, but the religion that they had in that day wasn't good news. And for him to come out and say, I'm not ashamed of the nearly too good to be true news about Christ, what is that talking about? That Jesus performed and kept all of the law for us so that we don't have to keep it. All we have to do is trust and believe Jesus and receive the goodness of God through what Jesus did, not through what we do. It's not what we do that pleases God. It's what Jesus did that pleases God, and it's all available to us based on faith, not based on performance. Those are radical statements that still are unpopular with religion today, but in, G in Paul's day, I guarantee you, this just, I'm sure, made all of the religious people irate. It brought up all of their wrath, all of their hatred for Paul to talk about good news that Jesus has paid for it and we don't have to earn it. But Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of that. That is the power of God, specifically this message that it's not your goodness, but it's your faith in Jesus' goodness that purchases everything from God. To, that is the power of God. And I also spent quite a bit of time showing that salvation here isn't limited to only the forgiveness of sins, which most churches today use the word salvation and forgiveness of sins interchangeably. Well, salvation includes forgiveness of sins, but it also includes prosperity. It also includes healing. It also includes deliverance. Everything that was purchased for us by Jesus is a part of what the gospel produces salvation right here. So today, most churches say, we just need to preach the gospel and tell people about the forgiveness of sins and let's leave all of this other stuff alone. 
NO, JESUS TOLD US IN THE 28TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF MATTHEW TO GO AND MAKE DISCIPLES. THAT MEANS PEOPLE WHO LEARN ABOUT HIM. AND THEN IN VERSE 20, HE SAYS, TEACHING THEM TO OBSERVE ALL THINGS THAT I COMMANDED. HE COMMANDED US TO GO HEAL THE SICK, CLEANSE THE LEPER. HE COMMANDED US TO PREACH DELIVERANCE TO THOSE THAT HAVE BEEN BOUND. AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, THE CHURCH HAS JUST SHRUNK uh, THE GOSPEL MESSAGE DOWN TO IT'S JUST CONCERNING FORGIVENESS OF SINS. IT INCLUDES THAT, BUT IT ALSO IS PART OF YOUR SALVATION TO BE HEALED, TO BE DELIVERED. I'M GOING TO SAY SOME THINGS HERE. I'LL SPEND WEEKS EXPLAINING THIS AS WE GO THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS, BUT THERE'S SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS THAT THIS IS A RADICAL THOUGHT TO YOU, AND IT WAS A RADICAL THOUGHT TO THE PEOPLE THAT PAUL WAS TALKING TO, THAT HEALING HAS BEEN PURCHASED THROUGH JESUS FOR YOU JUST AS MUCH AS FORGIVENESS OF SINS. PROSPERITY HAS BEEN PURCHASED FOR YOU JUST AS MUCH AS FORGIVENESS OF SINS. DELIVERANCE FROM OPPRESSION, DEPRESSION, FEAR, ANXIETY, ANGER HAS BEEN PURCHASED FOR YOU THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID. YOU DON'T HAVE TO DO SOMETHING ELSE TO EARN IT. IT ISN'T AN ADDITION TO SALVATION. IT'S AN INTEGRAL PART OF SALVATION. JESUS WANTS YOU HEALED, DELIVERED, SET FREE, PROSPERED, JUST AS MUCH AS HE WANTS YOU FORGIVEN OF SINS. AND IT'S THE GOSPEL THAT RELEASES THAT POWER OF SALVATION FOR HEALING, FOR DELIVERANCE, FOR JOY, FOR PEACE, AND FORGIVENESS OF SINS. IT'S UNDERSTANDING THE GOSPEL THAT RELEASES THAT. SO I COULD SAY THIS, THAT IF YOU ARE SICK, IF YOU ARE POOR, IF YOU'RE AFRAID, IF YOU ARE BOUND BY UNFORGIVENESS, IF YOU ARE DEPRESSED, AND ON AND ON I COULD GO WITH ALL OF THESE NEGATIVE THINGS THAT EVEN CHRISTIANS EXPERIENCE, IT'S BECAUSE YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THE GOSPEL. BECAUSE THE GOSPEL IS THE POWER OF GOD UNTO SALVATION, WHICH IS ALL-INCLUSIVE OF ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT I'VE TALKED ABOUT. IF YOU ARE STRUGGLING IN ANY OF THOSE AREAS, YOU ARE STRUGGLING TO UNDERSTAND HOW TRULY GOOD NEWS the, THE MESSAGE IS OF WHAT JESUS DID FOR YOU, AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, YOU'VE MIXED IT WITH YOUR OWN PERFORMANCE. DID YOU KNOW SATAN CANNOT CONDEMN JESUS AND SAY THAT JESUS DIDN'T DO IT ALL. JESUS WASN'T PERFECT. I BELIEVE THAT ALL OF THE PEOPLE, THE CHRISTIAN PEOPLE THAT ARE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, YOU WOULD BELIEVE THAT JESUS WAS PERFECT AND THAT HE DID EVERYTHING PERFECTLY AND THAT HE HAS POWER TO OVERCOME ANYTHING. SATAN ISN'T REALLY ACCUSING JESUS WHAT HE'S DOING IS ACCUSING US AND SAYING, OH, YEAH, JESUS CAN HEAL, JESUS CAN DELIVER, JESUS COULD SOLVE YOUR PROBLEM IN A HEARTBEAT, BUT WHAT MAKES YOU THINK HE WOULD DO IT FOR YOU? YOU HAVEN'T FASTED, YOU HAVEN'T PRAYED, YOU'VE DONE THIS WRONG, YOU'VE DONE THAT WRONG, AND IT'S OUR SIN CONSCIOUSNESS, AND BECAUSE WE DON'T UNDERSTAND THE GOSPEL, WE THINK THAT GOD IS GIVING US ONLY WHAT WE DESERVE. WE DON'T DOUBT THAT GOD HAS THE POWER, WE JUST DOUBT THAT HE WOULD DO IT FOR US BECAUSE WE KNOW US. AND WE KNOW THAT WE DON'T DESERVE IT. AND SO we, WE BEG AND PLEAD AND HOPE THAT HE'LL DO SOMETHING, BUT WE DON'T HAVE FAITH, CONFIDENCE, AND ASSURANCE BECAUSE WE DON'T UNDERSTAND THE GOSPEL. THE GOSPEL WILL SET YOU FREE FROM A PERFORMANCE-BASED RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. IT WILL SET YOU FREE FROM THE GUILT AND THE CONDEMNATION THAT COMES WHEN YOU KNOW THAT YOU HAVEN'T DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT. IF YOU TRULY UNDERSTOOD THE GOSPEL, THE NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS THAT IT'S NOT WHAT YOU DESERVE, IT'S WHAT JESUS DESERVED, AND HE'S OFFERED EVERYTHING THAT HE HAS MADE AVAILABLE TO YOU ON THE BASIS OF FAITH, NOT ON THE BASIS OF PERFORMANCE. MAN, THAT IS NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS. AND YOU KNOW, THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW ALL AROUND THE WORLD. WE HAVE OVER THREE BILLION PEOPLE THAT COULD WATCH THIS PROGRAM AT ANY GIVEN TIME. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE ALL AROUND THE WORLD UPSET WITH WHAT I'M SAYING. AND I'M SAYING EXACTLY WHAT PAUL SAID, THAT IT IS THE GOSPEL, THE NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS THAT JESUS PAID IT ALL. YOU DON'T HAVE TO PAY. JESUS PAID IT ALL. THAT IS THE POWER OF GOD UNTO GETTING YOUR SINS FORGIVEN, UNTO GETTING YOUR BODY HEALED, UNTO GETTING PROSPERITY, DELIVERANCE, JOY, PEACE, EVERYTHING ELSE. MAN, THAT'S A RADICAL STATEMENT. AND THEN HE SAYS IN THE NEXT VERSE, HE SAYS, FOR THEREIN, TALKING ABOUT IN THE GOSPEL, IN THIS MESSAGE ABOUT IT'S WHAT JESUS DID FOR YOU, NOT WHAT YOU DO FOR JESUS. IN THAT MESSAGE IS THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD REVEALED FROM FAITH TO FAITH AS IT IS WRITTEN, THE JUST 
SHALL LIVE BY FAITH. AGAIN, I'M GOING TO HAVE TO HURRY THROUGH HERE. I COULD SPEND AN HOUR ON EVERY ONE OF THESE VERSES, BUT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD IS REVEALED. SEE, IF YOU ARE LIVING UNDER THE LAW AND IF YOU THINK YOU'VE GOT TO PERFORM, YOU'VE GOT TO BE HOLY BEFORE GOD WILL ANSWER YOUR PRAYER, YOU ARE SEEKING RIGHTEOUSNESS, BUT IT'S SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS THAT YOU'RE AFTER. ROMANS CHAPTER 10 MAKES A VERY CLEAR CONTRAST BETWEEN A RIGHTEOUSNESS WHICH COMES OF THE LAW AND A RIGHTEOUSNESS WHICH IS OF FAITH. SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS IS BASED ON YOUR PERFORMANCE, KEEPING ALL OF THE LAW, THE RULES AND THE REGULATIONS, AND IT IS INFINITELY INFERIOR TO GOD'S RIGHTEOUSNESS. ROMANS 3.23 SAYS ALL HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. YOU COULD SAY SHORT OF GOD'S KIND OF RIGHTEOUSNESS THAT WAS MANIFESTED AND EXEMPLIFIED, DEMONSTRATED THROUGH JESUS. ALL OF US HAVE COME SHORT OF JESUS' RIGHTEOUSNESS. AND YOU MAY HAVE SOME SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS, AND THAT WILL BENEFIT YOU IN YOUR RELATIONSHIPS WITH PEOPLE. BUT WHEN IT COMES TO GOD, YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE HIS RIGHTEOUSNESS. AND THIS SAYS, FOR THEREIN IS THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD, A FAITH RIGHTEOUSNESS, A RIGHTEOUSNESS THAT COMES BY JUST HAVING IT GIVEN TO YOU BECAUSE YOU PUT FAITH IN WHAT JESUS DID. THAT RIGHTEOUSNESS IS REVEALED FROM FAITH TO FAITH, NOT FROM PERFORMANCE TO PERFORMANCE. NOT FROM WHAT YOU DO, YOU SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER EARN IT, AND THEN GOD RESPONDS TO YOU. THESE ARE RADICAL STATEMENTS. AND AGAIN, I COULD AMPLIFY ON THIS, BUT I I WANT TO MOVE ALONG, BUT I JUST HAVE TO MAKE THIS POINT THAT THE RELIGIOUS PEOPLE OF PAUL'S DAY NEARLY CHOKED TO DEATH ON THESE FIRST TWO STATEMENTS RIGHT HERE IN THE VERY BEGINNING OF THIS BOOK THAT YOU'RE TELLING ME THAT IT'S NOT BASED ON I DON'T HAVE TO BECOME CIRCUMCISED, I DON'T HAVE TO GO TO THE uh, SYNAGOGUE, I DON'T HAVE TO KEEP THESE RULES AND REGULATIONS, I DON'T HAVE TO OBSERVE THE SABBATH, I DON'T HAVE TO DO THESE THINGS. THIS IS NOT WHAT MAKES ME RIGHT WITH GOD. THAT WAS SO RADICAL AND SO OFFENSIVE TO THE JEWS THAT I KNOW PAUL WAS THINKING uh, THAT SOME OF THESE PEOPLE ARE SAYING, IF YOU DON'T SHOW PEOPLE HOW EVIL THEY ARE AND HOW SINFUL THEY ARE, AND IF YOU DON'T SHOW THEM THAT YOU'VE MISSED IT IN THIS AND THIS AND THIS, WELL, THEN PEOPLE WILL NEVER TURN TO GOD. AND SO PAUL SAYS IN THE NEXT VERSE, AND IT STARTS IN VERSE 18. VERSES 18 THROUGH 20 ARE SOME POWERFUL SCRIPTURES THAT, uh, AGAIN, I COULD SPEND A LOT OF TIME ON, MORE THAN ONE DAY'S PROGRAM ON. I'M GOING TO HAVE TO HURRY THROUGH THIS. BUT LOOK, IT SAYS IN VERSE 18, FOR THE WRATH OF GOD. THE WORD FOR IS CONNECTING THIS TO THE PREVIOUS STATEMENTS. HE HAD JUST BEEN TALKING ABOUT IT'S THE GOODNESS OF GOD. IT'S THE NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS THAT GOD ISN'T GIVING YOU WHAT YOU DESERVE, BUT HE'S GIVING YOU WHAT JESUS DESERVES, AND ALL YOU HAVE TO DO IS BELIEVE AND RECEIVE, OR DOUBT AND DO WITHOUT. THAT'S NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS. AND HERE'S THE REASON THAT YOU DON'T HAVE TO JUST TELL PEOPLE HOW TERRIBLE THEY ARE AND WHAT GREAT SINNERS THEY ARE, BECAUSE FOR THE WRATH OF GOD IS REVEALED FROM HEAVEN AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS AND UNRIGHTEOUSNESS OF MEN WHO HOLD THE TRUTH IN UNRIGHTEOUSNESS, BECAUSE THAT WHICH MAY BE KNOWN OF GOD IS MANIFEST IN THEM, FOR GOD HAS SHOWN IT UNTO THEM FOR THE INVISIBLE THINGS OF HIM FROM THE CREATION OF THE WORLD. MAN, THAT'S A RADICAL STATEMENT. IN OTHER WORDS, ALL OF THE THINGS FROM THE BEGINNING OF CREATION UP UNTIL THIS TIME, THESE THINGS HAVE BEEN SHOWN UNTO THEM. THEY HAVE BEEN CLEARLY SEEN, IS WHAT IT SAYS RIGHT HERE IN THE 20TH VERSE, BEING UNDERSTOOD BY THE THINGS THAT ARE MADE, EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, SO THAT THEY ARE WITHOUT EXCUSE. THOSE ARE RADICAL STATEMENTS. THIS IS BASICALLY SAYING THAT THERE IS AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON OF THE EXISTENCE OF GOD, AND NOT ONLY THAT GOD EXISTS, BUT HIS WRATH AGAINST THEIR SINS. THEY KNOW IN THEIR HEART THAT WHEN THEY GO OUT AND KILL A PERSON AND TAKE AWAY LIFE, THAT THAT'S NOT RIGHT. THEY KNOW THAT WHEN THEY ABUSE OTHER PEOPLE AND DO THESE THINGS WRONG AND SLANDER PEOPLE AND THEY HURT PEOPLE WITH THEIR WORDS OR WITH THEIR ACTIONS, THEY KNOW IN THEIR HEART THAT THESE THINGS ARE WRONG. THERE IS AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE. IN VERSE 18, IT SAYS THAT THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE IS REVEALED. AND IF YOU WERE TO LOOK THIS UP IN THE GREEK, THE GREEK IS MUCH MORE DESCRIPTIVE THAN OUR ENGLISH LANGUAGE. IT HAS TENSES TO WORDS, AND IT'LL SHOW YOU WHETHER IT'S PAST TENSE, PRESENT TENSE, uh, FUTURE TENSE, OR WHATEVER. AND WHEN IT SAYS HERE THAT FOR THE WRATH OF GOD IS REVEALED FROM HEAVEN AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS AND UNRIGHTEOUSNESS OF MAN. IF YOU LOOK THIS UP IN THE GREEK, IT LITERALLY IS SAYING THAT THE WRATH OF GOD IS ALREADY REVEALED. IT'S ALREADY BEEN REVEALED. IT'S ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON. 
AND IT SAYS IN THE NEXT VERSE, BUT THAT WHICH MAY BE KNOWN OF GOD IS MANIFEST IN THEM, FOR GOD HAS SHOWN IT UNTO THEM. AND THIS IS WITH... THIS IS PEOPLE THAT IF A PERSON SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER COULD BE BORN AND THEN ABANDONED AND GROW UP AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER LIVE IN TOTAL ISOLATION WITH NOBODY AROUND THEM TO TELL THEM ANYTHING, THEY STILL WOULD HAVE THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF THE EXISTENCE OF GOD AND HIS DISPLEASURE WITH SIN AND THINGS THAT THEY ARE DOING WRONG. THAT'S WHAT THIS IS SAYING. THIS IS INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON. IT DOESN'T MATTER IF THOSE PEOPLE HAVE EVER HAD THE GOSPEL PREACHED UNTO THEM, WHETHER THE CHRISTIAN RELIGION HAS EVER BEEN TOLD THEM, WHETHER ANYBODY'S EVER BROUGHT THE BIBLE. INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON, THERE IS THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF RIGHT AND WRONG. YOU KNOW, I'M AMAZED AT ANIMALS. I'VE BEEN TO, YOU KNOW, DIFFERENT PLACES, SAN JUAN CAPISTRANO, WHERE THE uh, SPARROWS COME BACK EVERY YEAR ON THE SAME DAY TO THAT SAME MISSION. Uh, I'VE READ THINGS THAT, YOU KNOW, THE uh, SALMON SPAWN AND THEY TRAVEL THOUSANDS OF MILES AND COME BACK TO THE EXACT PLACE WHERE THEY WERE BORN. AND JUST ON AND ON, YOU COULD GO THROUGH NATURE. IF AN ANIMAL CAN HAVE THAT KIND OF A GUIDANCE SYSTEM ON THE INSIDE OF THEM AND JUST INTUITIVELY KNOW THINGS, WHY IN THE WORLD IS IT A STRETCH FOR PEOPLE TO BELIEVE THAT PEOPLE HAVE A KNOWLEDGE OF RIGHT AND WRONG? THE TRUTH IS, MANY PEOPLE DENY THIS, AND THEY DENY IT SO HARD THAT AFTER A WHILE THEY CONVINCE THEMSELVES AND THEY MAY CONVINCE OTHER PEOPLE, BUT ACCORDING TO THE WORD OF GOD, EVERY PERSON THAT HAS EVER DRAWN A BREATH ON THIS PLANET KNEW THAT THEY WEREN'T GOD, THAT THERE WAS A GOD, THEY WEREN'T HIM, THEY NEEDED GOD, AND THAT THEY HAD DISPLEASED HIM BY THEIR ACTIONS. THEY HAD HAD IT REVEALED ALL UNRIGHTEOUSNESS AND ALL UNGODLINESS HAS BEEN SHOWN TO THEM. THEIR CONSCIENCE CONDEMNS THEM. OVER HERE IN ROMANS CHAPTER 2, IT TALKS ABOUT THIS. THEIR CONSCIENCE EITHER BEARS WITNESS WITH WHAT THEY DO OR CONDEMNS THEM. THIS IS SOMETHING THAT'S INSIDE OF EVERY SINGLE PERSON. AND IN VERSE 20, IT SAYS, FOR THE INVISIBLE THINGS OF HIM FROM THE CREATION OF THE WORLD ARE CLEARLY SEEN. THIS MEANS IT'S NOT VAGUE, IT'S NOT HARD TO UNDERSTAND, THEY COULDN'T COMPREHEND IT. NO, THEY CLEARLY SEE, BEING UNDERSTOOD BY THE THINGS WHICH ARE MADE, EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, SO THAT THEY ARE WITHOUT EXCUSE. YOU KNOW, WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM, OUTSIDE OF MY uh, BRIGADE HEADQUARTERS, HAWK HILL, AND I WOULD DRIVE SOMETIMES ON, on HIGHWAY 1 THERE IN VIETNAM, AND OFF uh, TO THE WEST OF THAT HIGHWAY, THERE WERE THESE THREE TEMPLES. AND, and YOU KNOW, it was, IT WAS HUNDREDS OF YARDS OFF OF THE ROAD, AND SO I NEVER GOT UP CLOSE TO THEM, BUT IT LOOKED TO ME LIKE THEY WERE THREE FIVE-STORY TALL BUILDINGS, AND THERE WERE THREE OF THEM THAT WERE RIGHT THERE ALL TOGETHER. THEY WERE SO CLOSE THAT, AGAIN, I WAS AT A DISTANCE, BUT IT LOOKED LIKE YOU COULD JUST BARELY WALK IN BETWEEN THESE BUILDINGS. THEY WERE SEPARATE BUILDINGS, BUT THEY WERE SO CLOSE TOGETHER THAT YOU COULD JUST BARELY WALK BETWEEN THEM. THEY HAD FALLEN INTO RUIN. TREES WERE GROWING OUT OF THE ROOF AND OUT OF THE SIDES OF IT AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND I ASKED ABOUT IT, AND I WAS TOLD THAT THOSE THREE TEMPLES PREDATED CHRISTIANITY COMING TO VIETNAM BY 500 YEARS. SO THEY WERE 500 YEARS BEFORE ANYBODY CAME AND TOLD THEM WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAID, AND YET I WAS TOLD THAT THESE WERE THREE TEMPLES TO ONE GOD WHO MANIFESTED HIMSELF IN A TRINITY. NOW, I'M NOT SAYING THAT THIS WAS TRUE WORSHIP OF GOD. I BELIEVE THAT IT WAS PROBABLY POLLUTED. THEY HAD PROBABLY PUT OTHER THINGS INTO IT AS DESCRIBED HERE IN ROMANS CHAPTER 1, BUT NONETHELESS, IT CONFIRMS THIS VERSE THAT EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, TALKING ABOUT THE TRINITY, IS REVEALED TO PEOPLE IN AN INTUITIVE WAY. BEFORE ANYBODY BROUGHT SCRIPTURE TO THEM AND TOLD THEM ABOUT THE FATHER, SON, AND HOLY GHOST, THEY HAD A CONCEPT OF A GOD THAT WAS IN THREE PARTS. YOU KNOW, I WENT TO Chichen ITZA, uh, MEXICO, IN THE YUCATAN PENINSULA, AND uh, THEY HAD AN ENGRAVING THERE, AND THE GUY WHO WAS THE GUIDE TO OUR GROUP SAID THAT THEY BELIEVED IN A TRINITY, THAT THE THUNDERBIRD WAS ONE OF THE MANIFESTATIONS, AND IT SHOWED ON THESE ENGRAVINGS THAT THEIR RELIGIOUS SYMBOLS, THEY BELIEVED IN A GOD THAT HAD A TRINITY THAT MANIFESTED HIMSELF IN THREE DIFFERENT WAYS. NOW, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT THAT WORSHIP WAS PERVERTED BECAUSE IN THAT PLACE THEY OFFERED HUMAN SACRIFICES. YOU KNOW, WHEN THE SPANIARDS CAME INTO MEXICO CITY, THEY FOUND A PYRAMID THAT THEY ESTIMATED WAS MADE OUT OF 350,000 SKULLS. 
THAT THE MEXICANS HAD BEEN OFFERING HUMAN SACRIFICES AND THEY WOULD CUT THE HEART OUT AND THROW THE BODY AND IT WOULD ROLL DOWN THIS PYRAMID AND THE PEOPLE AT THE BOTTOM WOULD JUST eat, CANNIBALIZE THESE PEOPLE WHO HAD BEEN SACRIFICED TO THESE DEMON GODS. AND YET THEY BELIEVED IN A TRINITY. SO I'M CERTAINLY NOT ENDORSING THAT AND SAYING THAT THAT WAS A TRUE WORSHIP OF GOD, BUT IT DOES REFLECT WHAT THESE VERSES SAY THAT EVERYBODY ON A HEART LEVEL AT ONE TIME KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD. I HAD A MAN WHO WORKED FOR ME, AND HE WAS RAISED IN CALIFORNIA. HE WAS RAISED AN ATHEIST. HIS PARENTS DID NOT BELIEVE IN GOD, AND SO HE WAS TAUGHT THAT THERE WAS NO GOD. AND WHEN I WAS TEACHING ON THIS VERY PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE, HE CAME TO ME AND HE SAYS, LOOK, I RESPECT YOU, and BUT I JUST CAN'T BELIEVE THIS. I NEVER KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD UNTIL HE GOT SAVED IN HIS 20s. AND I SAID, WELL, I DON'T MEAN TO CRITICIZE YOU, BUT SOMETIME GOD REVEALED HIMSELF TO YOU. YOU MAY HAVE DENIED IT. HE DOESN'T FORCE IT ON YOU, BUT IT WAS REVEALED TO YOU AT ONE TIME. SO HE WENT AND HE PRAYED ABOUT IT, AND AS HE PRAYED ABOUT IT, THE LORD REMINDED HIM OF A TIME WHEN HE WAS AROUND 10 YEARS OLD, AND HE LIVED IN THE LOS ANGELES AREA. HE CLIMBED UP ON A HILL, AND HE WAS WATCHING THE SUNSET. AND AS THAT SUN SET, HE BEGAN TO SEE THESE LIGHTS COME ON ALL OVER LOS ANGELES, MILLIONS OF LIGHTS. AND HE WAS JUST THINKING ABOUT HOW MUCH EFFORT IT TOOK TO PUT EACH ONE OF THOSE LIGHTS IN THEIR PROPER PLACE. AND HE WAS JUST THINKING ABOUT THIS. AND AS IT GOT DARK, HE JUST LIFTED HIS GAZE AND LOOKED UP INTO THE SKY, AND THERE WERE MILLIONS OF LIGHTS. AND HE SAID THAT THE THOUGHT CAME TO HIM VERY CLEARLY THAT JUST AS THOSE LIGHTS IN LOS ANGELES, EVERY ONE HAD TO BE PUT THERE. THEY DIDN'T EVOLVE. IT DIDN'T JUST HAPPEN. EVERY ONE OF THOSE LIGHTS IN THE SKY, EVERY STAR HAD TO BE MADE BY SOMEBODY. AND HE SAID RIGHT THEN, HE RECOGNIZED AND SAYS, THERE MUST BE A GOD. BUT WHEN HE WENT BACK HOME AND BEGAN TO EXPRESS THESE THINGS, HIS ATHEIST PARENTS REJECTED IT, AND SO HE DISMISSED IT AND STUFF. BUT JUST AS THIS VERSE SAYS, EVERYONE AT ONE TIME KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD. EVERYONE AT ONE TIME KNEW OF THEIR NEED FOR A GOD. AND EVEN ATHEISTS. I REMEMBER WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM, THESE PEOPLE WOULD SAY, WE DON'T BELIEVE IN THE GOD. THEY'RE, they're ATHEISTS, AND THEY WOULD SPOUT OFF THESE THINGS. BUT WHEN THE BOMBS GOT TO DROPPING AND THE BULLETS GOT TO CRYING, I SAW SOME OF THOSE SAME PEOPLE WHO SAID THEY WERE ATHEISTS PRAYING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, HELP ME. <laughs> I, THERE ARE NO ATHEISTS IN FOXHOLES. YOU PUT A GUN UP TO A PERSON'S HEAD AND COCK IT AND THEY'LL GO, OH, GOD, EVEN THOUGH THEY SAY THEY DON'T BELIEVE IN GOD. IT'S A MIND GAME. AT A HEART LEVEL, EVERYBODY AT ONE TIME KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD. NOW, THE REST OF ROMANS CHAPTER 1, AND I'LL GET INTO THIS ON TOMORROW'S PROGRAM, SHOWS YOU THAT YOU CAN HARDEN YOURSELF TO THIS REVELATION AND YOU CAN REACH A PLACE TO WHERE GOD WILL JUST LET YOU GO. And, AND THE SCRIPTURE SAYS YOU'RE TURNED OVER TO A REPROBATE MIND WHERE YOU'VE LOST ALL SENSE OF, of GOODNESS AND THIS CONSCIENCE AND STUFF. YOU CAN SEAR IT WITH A HOT IRON AS IT SAYS IN 1 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 4. AND WE'LL BE TALKING ABOUT THAT TOMORROW. BUT MAN, THESE ARE POWERFUL TRUTHS. IT'S THE GOOD NEWS THAT'S GOING TO SET PEOPLE FREE. YOU DON'T HAVE TO BEAT THEM OVER THE HEAD WITH HOW SORRY THEY ARE BECAUSE ON A HEART LEVEL, EVERYBODY ALREADY KNOWS THAT. THEY JUST NEED TO HEAR THE GOOD NEWS, NOT THE BAD NEWS. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse at how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are bringing healing and freedom to people in every generation. People like Allison Rolla. At eight years old, Allison was diagnosed with alopecia universalis, a rare and incurable disease that causes the total loss of hair. She was bald for over a decade until one day she was introduced to a message from Andrew Womack. And I mean, the light bulb went off like, oh, I don't have to do anything to earn healing. I don't have to fast. I don't have to pray. I don't have to beg. I literally do not even have to ask you. You already healed me. And it was so empowering because I was finally free of, of this works mentality. Today, Allison is completely healed. And with a full head of hair, she now inspires others to receive their healing in Christ. To watch the full healing journey of Allison Rolla, visit awmi.net today. I'D LIKE TO GIVE YOU A SPECIAL INVITATION TO JOIN ME ON AUGUST THE 4TH THROUGH THE 7TH FOR JUBILEE AT VICTORY LIFE CHURCH. THIS IS MY GOOD FRIEND AND BOARD MEMBER, PASTOR Dwayne SHERIFF, THAT PASTORS THERE. I'VE SPOKEN THERE BEFORE. AND THIS JUBILEE IS JUST A SPECIAL TIME OF PRAISE AND WORSHIP, CASTING VISION FOR THE COMING YEAR. 
I'm really honored to be a part of it. And Dwayne and a lot of the people on his staff will be speaking. It's going to be a special time. Remember, it's August the 4th through the 7th in Durant, Oklahoma, the Jubilee for Victory Life Church with Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. Andrew is pleased to announce the release of his brand new hardback book titled Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. This brand new book includes all of Andrew's personal study notes and commentary on the book of Romans, compiled from Andrew's Life for Today study Bible and Living Commentary. This valuable resource is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to get this new book that I've put out on Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. And this has the printed text of the book of Romans. It has my living commentary notes, the Romans portion of that. We also have the living commentary on my whole Bible. I've written footnotes on over 25,000 verses in the Bible. And then we have testimonies. We have two DVDs of testimonies of people whose life have been changed by these truths. So our announcer will give you all of that information. Please call or write and receive these materials today. Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace, is also available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Today, you heard Andrew's personal revelation on the book of Romans. You can study through the entire Bible with Andrew when you get his continually updated living commentary. This extraordinary resource contains his personal study notes, footnotes, and commentary on over 25,000 Bible verses. Andrew has priced this valuable study tool at only $120. Go to awmi.net to download yours today. Also today, Andrew's offering the Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs as his free gift to you when you write or call. This special offer is a $50 value, absolutely free when you contact us today. Or you can get each of these valuable resources as part of the Romans package. This package includes Andrew's Living Commentary, as well as the Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace, hardback book, your choice of either the CD or DVD album, and Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs. This incredible package has a catalog value of $275, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $197. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.